Hello, Fight Insight fans, viewers, and listeners. I'm the Filipino podcasting machine, Princey D, and with me as always, Timmy B. Before we start, please take a moment to follow and subscribe to us on YouTube or wherever you get your pods and leave five-star reviews. The reviews can really help us reach new viewers. If you'd like to support the, the show, check out MiddaySquares.com. Use the code Fight Insight 15 to save 15% on your first order or click on our show notes. On today's episode, we talked to a Filipino MMA superstar rising in the ranks of 1FC, discuss family being on your corner, and the odd main event, Laud versus DeMont, and a whole lot more. Timmy, hit it! It's Timmy B, Prince B, Fight Insight, yeah. Our guest today is an Adam Weight fighter for 1FC and a member of Coach Mark's incredible Team Lakai of the Philippines. In August, she defeated the very tough B. Nguyen in an incredible battle and secured a fight to earn an alternate spot in the Grand Prix. Unfortunately, her opponent was unable to compete, so we're going to talk to her about what's next, which was just announced today. She's a dynamic striker with a deadly submission game, and we're thrilled to have her on the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Philippines, please welcome to the podcast, Genoway, the graceful also. <laughs> have a great day. So here I am. Hey, Jenilyn. We're so excited Hello. to have you. Thank you. Me too. Jenlyn, the first thing I got to ask you is your nickname is The Graceful. Where did that yeah. come from? Um, actually, I, ju I just love the word, gra word grace from the Bible. And oh. yeah, I, want, I also want to move gracefully, like doing my submissions gracefully, something like that. Nice, nice. <laughs> oh, you know what, Jenlyn, I thought you did some ballet. That's why you, you that's why <laughs> the nickname. No, actually no. But I was a dancer before, but a modern dance. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. nice, nice. All right, cool. Jenilyn, uh, you're in the Philippines. We greatly appreciate you coming on. I did want to ask, how long have you been training with Team Lakai? Um, I, started, I started training with them last year uh, during the pandemic. Yeah, so I just realized that I think I need to level up. I need to move up. And I need to move to Team Lakai and pursue my dreams, you know. The, the oh. pandemic hits me hard. Yeah, that's crazy. Is it um, stressful, like training with all those champions? Because Team Lakai is, is, I mean, super famous and champions all over the place. Like, is it intimidating? No, actually, it's very exciting and very motivating because I get to partner up with uh, the champions like Joshua Pasho, the, the same weight division as me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Jenna, did they go easy on you when you're sparring or is it just all full throttle um during the training there's no oh you're a girl so we're going to reduce our strength there's no there's no like that so we just trained and give our all on the training wow. yeah nice and we met we met coach mark he came on our podcast actually he was so nice what a great guy it must be so amazing to learn from him, right? Because, I mean, he's so well-known and he's got so much experience himself. Yes, um, he's, a, he's a very patient coach. Like, he's been teaching me a lot of stuff patiently because, you know, uh, I, I came from Muay Thai and I just transitioned to MMA. So I have to learn everything, like the submission from the very start. I, I mean, but your submission game, and I mean, I was going to get to it later, but... When you fought B. Nguyen, I mean, that was crazy. You went from submission to submission. At the end, were you trying to do an omoplata? Like, you almost yeah. had her leg. I was trying to take uh, her arm, but it's not working. So I tried to take her. Uh, I tried to do the gogo plata. Gogo but, plata, yes. Yeah, I think, I guess she's very tough. She doesn't really want to top. I I'm I actually hear her um, bones and <laughs> her shoulder cracking, something like that. And her, I I can I can also hear her choking on the um, guillotine, but she really doesn't doesn't want to top. I can yeah. also hear her say, "No, I'm not gonna top." Yeah, Prince, wow. did you 
Prince, did you hear that in the fight? Like, yeah, well, that, that's the thing. That was one of the things that came to like, I, this person doesn't have no type of button. That was nuts. But I was saying, gentlemen, if for the uh, Plata, you should have just, you know what? When you're in the in the ground and training with uh, with Mark, maybe you should switch it up and make it your own and make it a little tighter and call it Plata, Coco Platito. <laughs> Coco Platito. Coco Platito be, uh, for you, Tim, that means plate in Filipino. Yeah. <laughs> nice, Plat- nice. Yeah, no, Jenlyn, that is funny that you said that, though, because it when the ref said to her, are you okay? And then she screamed out, I'm okay, right? Like, she, because she didn't want to tap. But, I mean, your submission game was amazing. You you were all over her transitioning from submission to submission. You did a great, great fight. Were you happy with that win? I'm, I'm happy with that win, but I think uh, I can do more if uh, I wasn't really tired on the second and third round. <laughs> Well, I admit that I was really tired yeah. because it was my first uh, atom weight fight. Ah, okay. Because, yeah, because that was your first fight at that weight class. So it was a, a weight class lower than your normal. So you mean just because, like, cutting down the weight and stuff was tough? Yep. Ah, okay, okay. Did you, when did you know that you wanted to be a professional fighter? Um, at first, from my very first fight, uh, even when I'm still with Muay Thai, I really wanted to be a professional fighter. But uh, of course, you can uh, go to being amateur. Uh, you cannot just step up to professional if you're not. You didn't start with being an amateur, right? So I think it's just a step by step process. Okay, all right. Um, when you uh, when you had that fight scheduled and so what, what people may or may not know but um what when you had that fight scheduled with grace cleveland to for the alternate spot for the grand prix and then unfortunately she suffered some sort of like neurological thing right like um we do follow her on instagram and we wish her well but something happened where neurologically she couldn't fight they didn't get you an alternate but today they announced your fight so now you have a new opponent i'm going to put it on the screen here this is from your instagram <laughs> Oh, that's a cool poster. So this is Next Gen 2. For those that are listening on audio, it's Next Gen 2. And Jenlyn is now going to be fighting Jin Radzuan. You may know her as Shadow Cat. So how excited are you for this fight? Um, I'm very excited, of course, because uh, this is going to be uh, the alternate bout. But um, I just wish uh, they... We just we fought like before. I mean, they gave me that uh, bout earlier, oh, <laughs> so okay. you know, so I could I could step up immediately on the Grand Prix instead of the other girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because So He Hum, she uh, had to exit the Grand Prix because a broken yep. finger, I think, right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so they ended up using the other alternate when really it could have been you. So, yeah. but this is still an alternate spot. You never know what's going to happen. Yep. Um, so, I'm not praying for another injury, but <laughs> I'm just hoping. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I'm hoping to become an alternate. Yeah, yeah. But of course, I need to beat Jihin first before that. So um, let's do it step by step, just one step at a time. And I'm really preparing for Jihin right now because she's also a technical fighter. Yeah. Um, how you both, her last win was actually against B. Nguyen as well. So yeah. do, you, do you know her well? Because she is based out of Asia. I think she's, is she Thailand? No. Malaysian. Malaysian, that's right. Do you know her at all? No, I didn't. I don't know her at all. But um. The, uh, my teammate Gina Inyong already beat her from like I think it's last 2018 or 2019 yeah and uh, I've been training with uh, Ate Gina Inyong right now and she's been advising me some things <laughs> you know what the one thing you gotta you gotta give credit to 1FC because they make it look like you guys it's like a soap opera if you see the poster again it looks like Gentlemen, you look. I don't know who's the bida, who's the bad guy, who's the who's the good guy. <laughs> like, you look like the you look like the villain over there. Yeah. Oh my god! No, really? Good. Because no, it's good. on the side, right? Yeah, no, but it's a good poster. I mean, it does look good. 
Um, Jenilyn, there's got to be like a lot of young girls around the world, but especially in the Philippines that would look up to someone like you, right? Because they see you, they see you on TV, you're a success. What would you say to young girls that want to get involved in martial arts? Um, uh, first thing that I would like to tell them is that uh, don't be afraid because a lot of girls tell me that isn't, does it hurt or I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. Sorry for the connection. Don't be afraid to try uh, to try martial arts. And um, I, I also want to say that uh, pursue your dreams, whatever it is, uh, even though in, it's not on martial arts or anything, just pursue it. And um, just getting a little bit of audio connection problem. Hopefully she'll be back, Prince. There you go. Well, guys, if you guys are listening to it right now, I know we have a little dead time. So there's actually been a typhoon that's hit the Philippines. Uh, right currently, where Janelin's training at, uh, they've had they haven't had power in the last two days. So it's only it's we're lucky that you know the electricity kicked in. And there you go. There we go. Janelin's back. Janelin's Sorry. Back. No, I no, that's okay. So where am I? So you Did were I saying. So you were saying, yeah. So you were saying for the young girls, don't don't be afraid if it's if it might not even be martial arts. You want them to try. Yes. Um. So because uh, on my part, I just do things that I want. So just uh, do the things that you wanted to do, and don't listen to other people's opinion. Other people's opinion that you can't do it. So uh, what you do is very important how you feel is very important. So if you feel like doing it, just do it. <laughs> Nike. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just, like, there you go. <laughs> just do it. Just do yeah. it. But nice. Adeneline, you know what? I got to say, uh, one of the things, especially when it's wa watching some of your fights, you when you go in there, it's your focused and the aggression is all there. You put your whole heart in it. To it, especially the last fight that you're in with with B, that was just I'm, I'm telling you, like it was a totally. I saw like a different type of gentleman coming in, and you're really in there to take, you know, put a stomp in one FC to just show everybody, hey, I'm here to stay, I'm here to run this division, and so I my hat goes off to you. So where does that come from? Is that from like who who gave you that fighting spirit? Yes, um, I think uh, I. Every time I fight, I think of I'm not just going to do it just to win. I'm going to make a show. I'm going to give my best, mm -hmm. something like that. Every time I fight, I think of it. And that um, I always go back to the reasons why I do this. I, I fight, why I do what I do right now. Like um, I think of the hardships and uh, the sacrifice that I made just to get here. Yeah, that's all it came from. And uh, of course, um, I just think of uh the love the passion of the sports i, I really love to fight you know um it's, it's really different if you if you love what you are doing and that it benefits you in a lot of ways like financially emotionally mentally yeah that's awesome gentlemen so well said gentlemen um before we let you go and again we appreciate your time we did go to the fans and ask them some questions so we're going to ask you some fan questions okay okay the first one is from uh, a good friend of the podcast. His name is JC Oxina. First of all, he wanted to know if you could say hello, JC. Hello, JC. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to love that. He's a huge fan of yours. He did ask, um, you kind of already answered because you said you got tired in that first round against B, but he said, how close did you think you were to submitting her in the first round? Because he said, were you nervous of gassing out by trying so hard? I mean, you've kind of already answered it, but. Did... Uh, I, w I wasn't actually nervous of gassing out, but um, I think I'm trying to improve myself on the submission part that uh, I need to be patient on the locking part. Because as you can see, is that I transitioned so fast that I didn't even count like um because coach told me that when you choke you count to one to ten one thousand one one thousand two one thousand three until ten but i think uh i transitioned fastly on like um after the gogo plata i already went to another submission so i think i need to pursue that submission first before i transition i transition like to make sure that uh it's not really working before i transition 
Yeah, and on the gassing part, I I wasn't really nervous about that, but um, I just felt it on the second round and third round. But I was actually expecting it because uh, I think it was kind of hard for my recovery that time. Yeah, yeah. No, that's well, awesome. And plus, generally, you're gonna make your own lock as well, so you're gonna push the new Gaga Platito on the new lock. <laughs> Josh was got the passion lock, and you have the Gaga Platito. <laughs> Right this right? I'm gonna think of that Gaga Platito. Gaga Platito, I'm telling you generally, if you if you manage to pull that in the next fight, I will cry. And we will send you a fight inside t-shirt. How's that? <laughs> well, I'm going to try that. Okay. All right. Uh gentlemen, the next question. This is from J29. He asked, What is your favorite Filipino dessert? Ice cream, I think. I love ice cream. Yeah, what? dessert. And what? the the buko, what do you call that one? The halo halo, but it's all buko in it. What yeah. is uh what is buko, Prince? Buko, it's like coconut. Oh, yeah, okay, coconut. okay. All uh, coconut and oh my gosh, if you are diabetic, that's that's the way to go. That's to flip you right over, put some hair on your back. Buko nice. and uh, I was gonna Actually, have- I just tried halo halo for the very first time. Uh, yeah. what was it? Maybe a month ago at, at our good friend, Mark's restaurant, Islas, there's a, re- a Filipino restaurant in Toronto, gentlemen. And, uh, this guy runs a restaurant called Islas and I had hollow Halo there. My wife and I, oh, the greatest thing I've ever had. Yeah. Oh, that's good. But generally you gotta say, you gotta say, Timmy, but you gotta say gentlemen, Timmy probably said that uh, hollow Halo part pretty well. I've heard people say, Halo, Halo. I'm like, oh, I've never played that video game before. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Halo, Halo. Yeah. And then, gentlemen, the- different from different drink. Yeah. <laughs> Halo, Halo. Yeah. Gentlemen, the last question uh, is my question. I wanted to ask you, I'm going to show you a picture, okay? And you have to oh. tell me, I'm going to show you a picture and you have to tell me who is Lido Adewang in this photo. Ready? Okay. Oh my gosh. Let me see. Oh Did you catch God. it? Yeah. Which? Of course I <laughs> Yeah. I'm showing a photo of his last fight. His opponent had the same haircut, the nope. same color shorts. They look like twins. Yeah, but I can see the shorts, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, you can see the team yeah. Lakai. Did 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 you guys talk I about that in the I gym? Do. What's that? What? Did you uh, again, did you, please? No, no. Did you see the fight? Like when he fought, were you there that day? Uh, so we were watching at the uh, good friend of in her restaurant. Yeah, we were watching oh. together with the team. Oh, nice. I mean, yes, that was we a were great. Like, uh, kicking part <laughs> that was a crazy fight prince but did you think it was mm-hmm. funny that the guy looked just like Lido? yep we were laughing about it who's Lito there <laughs> the things were fighting something like that yeah it was so funny that he had the same red shorts and then the same haircut they looked very similar but i think they i think that person did it on purpose so when the when it came to the scorecards you, you you know you, you didn't know who to score for just in case the person lost at least you know you, you couldn't tell who was winning or not right so yeah, maybe yeah, that's, maybe, maybe that's a new style now yeah that's um a lot of uh issues about that decision part is you know it's, but yeah so just like angela you said that uh, never leave it to the judges yes. that's right Jenilyn, uh before we let you go, is there anything that you wanted to say or anybody that you wanted to give a shout out to? Yeah, so hello guys, support me as uh, I will be fighting with Lito Adiwang on November 12th. So watch us at uh, One Championship Live at YouTube or One Championship app. Yeah, and um, thank you everyone for supporting me and please continue supporting us even though we lose or win. You know, we really need and appreciate everyone who's been there by our side every time we fight and every time we lose, especially. Yeah, you guys don't lose a lot though, Janelyn. 
Prince, uh, Prince, what do you want to say to Jenelyn before she Jenelyn, goes? I want to say maraming salamat for coming on to the show. We appreciate it. And we wish you nothing but the best over here from Toronto, Canada. And good luck. And actually, before we let you go, um, I was wondering who won the fight between the two assholes in the back. I can hear there's two dogs in the background. Do you know who won that fight? It looked like a really fierce fight. <laughs> oh, I don't know. But uh, I'm sorry. But... I really have a lot of dogs, actually. You know, I love dogs. It's Wait, it's your dogs? <laughs> outside the house, yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. How, How many, many dogs, dogs do you have, have gentlemen? Yeah. I have a uh, Corgi. I have a uh, Chow Chow. I have American Bully. I have Shih Tzu. And I have one Ascal. <laughs> oh, wow. <Yeah. laughs> That's amazing. I have a feeling the Chihuahua one. Maybe the Chihuahua was the one who took it. It sounded like a Chihuahua bark. <laughs> Maybe. I think it's the smallest one. Yeah, <laughs> always. Jenlyn, thank you so much for coming. We will cheer you on like crazy. We hope that you uh, win this fight, get the alternate spot, and then, not that we want anyone to get hurt, but we hope you get in that Grand Prix and win that Grand Prix, okay? And then you can come back on the podcast and we can celebrate. Sure. Thank Diagna, you. Plata, platito. <laughs> All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great day. Okay. Bye bye. All right, buddy. Wow. I can't believe it. I can't believe she made it. Guys, uh, as Prince was saying, with the, what was it? Tor not tornado, typhoon? Yeah. Typhoon. typhoon. It was she, yeah. It's it's no joke over there. When the, no. listen, the electricity gets knocked out, it's, and before uh, she even came on, she mentioned that, you know, a lot of people actually, uh, were affected by it. Some, uh, there was actually some casualties also uh, due to the storm. And so, um, you know, at least she was able to come. And it was, it was, it was crazy too, Tim, just because Mark had the same issues as well. She meant, yeah. he mentioned that, you know, part of the reason why he was having connection issues was because of the storm, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy, man. Um, and so thanks, guys, for sticking with us. You know, uh, what a great opportunity to interview her. And I can't believe what are the odds that today they announced her fight? So like, how cool is that? She fights in another alternate fight. So at least they gave her another alternate fight. And you never know, right? Like Sohi Ham, who was going to be the number one rank in that tournament after she beat Denise Samboanga, mm -hmm. you know, she was the front runner to win that tournament. And now she's out because of a random fractured finger. So you never know what could happen. And Jenlyn might be back in that tournament. So pretty you crazy. Know. You know what, Tim? At this point, I just want this Grand Prix to finish because it's 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 like it's, honestly, so it's, it's, it's loaded with like drama, like yeah. all this, and we just want to see who comes out on top, right? And uh, but uh, generally, she's gonna. You know what? I yeah, I am excited for her fight. She's got a lot to prove and a lot to show as well. And there's a lot in, under her belt and her arsenal. So. Well, let's see how it goes, right? And Team Lakai, they're all scrappers, you know, so they don't yeah. they don't stop. They're all humble, humble fighters. But when they come onto the stage, like my goodness, like who stole your dog? You got to get that shirt too. That Team Lakai shirt looked good. Prince, our guest next week. I want to announce it because I always say I'm going to announce it after our guest. Our guest next week is a BKFC fighter. He is making his debut in BKFC, but he's a bare knuckle champion across the pond in the United Kingdom. He is a multi champion in bare knuckle his name is connor tierney he's going to be with us next week stay tuned for that that's going to be an amazing interview and uh this guy looks like a cool character man so we're gonna have fun with this guy yeah connor's gonna, it's gonna be an exciting interview and we can't wait to see this guy step into the ring it's gonna be fun it's gonna be exciting so I yeah know. can't wait and prince i do want to say you said it in the beginning but uh guys check out middaysquares.com I've been eating these for quite some time now. They are delicious. Go to middaysquares.com, use promo code FIGHTINSIGHTTEAM, or use the link in our show notes. You can save the 15% that way. Really great stuff. Uh, you know, functional chocolate bars, protein bars kind of thing, but it, they taste great. So check them out. Thank you for all the support. For those of you that have been buying it, we, you know, we understand a lot of you have. So thank you. Prince, yes. the next topic that I want to talk to you about and I know you know that I'm a little bit upset about this. Oh, yes. Da, da, da. Family coaches, good or bad? Okay. Uh, so yes. Prince, before I get to the reason I'm thinking about this, we know that there's a lot of um, family that coach their either their children or maybe their spouse. 
right? Or their their uh, partner, their loved one. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, he's exactly. a big one. The Lee family in One FC, they're coached by their father. Um, I have a photo here of Stephen Wonderboy with his dad. That's maybe an older photo. Um, what do you think, Prince? Good or bad if your family's your coach? Yeah, you know what? I mean, I I know what you're getting at here. I mean, it's 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 good to especially with your parents. I mean, we're talking about even for example, Khabib's dad as well too, right? I oh mean, yeah, yeah. Big inspirations. Uh, you know, they're they're in your corner. They you push you from the uh, from the very start. The, the, the thing is with with parents also, they know how to push a button. So they know uh, to put you in those, you know, uncomfortable uh, settings, right? And so they know how to push you and to push you that, to that extra mile. And, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, just as long as your parents, you know, you're not overdoing it, you're, you know, you're there to help them support. And, you know, you know, it again, you're in there, especially in MMA, it's an opportunity. And I honestly, when if you guys haven't seen the Ashley podcast that we did with, with her, she says it's an opportunity. You know, you, you live by the moment, you enjoy that time that you have in there. And so again, as, as family members and uh, as an, a fighter, you know, having that person beside you, it's just like, again, an extra up of, uh, of, uh, of actual inspiration and motivation to keep fighting on. Right. So I, I honestly think it's, it, it's a good thing just to have somebody in, in your, on your side. Um, but I mean, again, I, that that's why we're going to segue to your. No, no, no. But hold on. I am going to say, Prince, I don't really agree with you on that. Because mm -hmm. what about if you're not doing well? Or what about if you need to change things up? Or what about if you want to expand? Like, if you're with your father, mm -hmm. it must be tough to fire your father. Right. Or like, I don't know what the relationship is or whatnot, but, you know, it might be tough to move to a different gym. And then therefore, are you stuck? Like, are you stuck? Can you know, one coach can only teach you so much, perhaps. Right. Mm -hmm. Other people go to other gyms. I'm all, I always find it weird. Like uh, Lucky Lauren Murphy, her fiance is her coach or her uh, sorry, her husband is her coach. And then I always think like, okay, so, but what if you start to go on a losing streak? Like, what if you wanted to change up? Wonderboy Thompson, classic example, loses, uh, loses to Woodley twice. Then he's lost a few more fights, I think, right? Mm -hmm. So at what point does he go, hey, shoot, I need to change things up. And then, but maybe you can't because you're stuck with your dad. Like, <sighs> it, it, you know what? I mean, okay. And then, and then you're, you're bringing up such uh, fighters like you say May, uh, Mayweather. Right. Uh, okay. Him and him and uh, Mayweather Senior. They have a really long relationship. Um, sure, but he but he wins forever though. I think what I'm saying is like, but what if you start to lose? Uh, it's one thing if you just go on and winning forever. Fine, like Khabib, right? You never lost. So, okay, fine. My dad's good enough. He teaches me, and I and I win. But what if you start to lose? Are you now stuck with that coach? You know what? I think with Tom in Thompson's case, I think it's 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 the loyalty. I think he knows that. Listen, I, my dad's taught me all the way since I was a kid. You know, I don't. You know, I'm not moving anywhere else. And I think it's that loyalty uh, factor that kicks in. Uh, but I mean, right. yeah. So that's I, that's where where I'm thinking. Um, but it, again, it's it, it's tough to to drop what you know to go over to another gym. Like, what if that doesn't work out? So what what do you what do you got? Right. Sure, but you won't know unless you try, right? I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. Um, you know, and then what if you're like, how do I know how good of a coach your dad is, right? Like, I don't know, like the Lee family. Okay, so this, you know, Daddy Lee is teaching the son and the two daughters. Mm -hmm. And I think there is another brother too. But, you know, I, okay, he might just get lucky, right? And then if things start to fall apart. I don't know. I just think it's a weird dynamic. And then you wonder, like, how much are they able to separate, like, in the gym and then at home? Like, is it a weird environment? Is it, like, is it not as good for you mentally to be able to break away from the gym? Because technically, the gym's always following you, you know? Yeah, well, then that there's a term that says, you know, uh, blood is thicker than water, right? So you stick with your blood from, from, from even from losing, if, from, if you're winning and you're losing, you, regardless, you stick with that, with that family member, right? And so that's that type of mentality. Oh, I know. 
And you know what? Again, it's also part of its ego too. Like if you feel like, hey, you know what? No, but that's what I'm, I mean. Whose ego? The parent's ego? Or the, well, no, the fighter. Like the fighter. If you feel yeah. like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with, I'm, I'm gonna stick with my dad because you know what? I, I it's you know, I, I wouldn't uh, turn away from a family member. He's taught me everything I know. I'm gonna stick with him, and we're gonna go all the way, right? Regardless of the circumstances, and that's how family, again, even family dynamics. I mean, you'll have your ups and downs. If you're constantly having your downs, I mean, you know, you don't just up and leave. Hey, but know, this, but this is your, okay. But this is your career. You can't mm -hmm. afford to just have ups and downs in your career. And this, like you said, this this sport is a finite period of time. Mm -hmm. I can't like just stick with you, dad, forever. And if I lose, don't worry, don't worry, I'll win eventually. Well, no, I'm getting older and my body's taking more damage. Like you got to level, like you said, you got to level up continually. And if I need to go to a different coach, ah, I don't know. It's a tough one, man. When you were growing up, we, we do like to talk about ourselves a little bit. When you were growing up, were your parents involved in you in sports? Were they your coaches? Like what was the. Oh, share? well, yeah, listen, I'll, I'll share with you guys. So, I mean, um, we weren't really athletic family, so we were cut from every team. So, you know, my dad was, you know, you know, he, he was, he was lucky cause he never got to, you know, have to wake up in the morning to drive us off to like the, you know, to practice or anything like that. Cause we all sucked. So uh, that, you know, but, <laughs> but I mean, um, growing up, I mean, tennis was a big thing for our family. I mean, tennis was like, Oh man, you know, I was hoping that we were going to become like, you know, tennis champions. And that was like the Pete Sampras days, the Agassi really? days. I had no idea about this. Yeah, well, that, that's that's why I never told you because I was never any good. Um, so, but those were the times, and I'm telling you, you don't know how many how many like buckets of balls were lodged on top of like on top of like schools and stuff like that just because we suck so bad. But I mean, I mean, you know, again, as a parent, you have that expectation that your kid's going to do so well and excel, right? Um, but you know, if you don't, I mean, you know, you you can't expect too much, right? So. Uh, how about you, Tim? Like, how was well, 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 sorry, before we switch to me, though, was your dad tough on you, though? Or when you weren't doing so well, he was just like, hey, that's okay? No, yeah, no. We Honestly, my dad was cool. Like, I mean, if we weren't, and that's the thing, because we decided to pick it up and say, hey, dad, we're going to try and, you know, I'm going to go and uh, try and get back in tennis again. Okay, fine. We go a couple rounds. But then, you know, as a kid, you know, one or two rounds in, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to go play Pokemon or play on my Nintendo or my Atari and give up on it, right? So... Uh, my dad was never pressuring us to do any of that. I mean, it's, it wasn't only until later on in life that I started realizing, okay, playing sports and doing all these activities was fun. And yeah. I still bring that into my lifestyle, right? So um, I wish I did it as a kid. I wish I kind of, you know, had that like mentality. But um, yeah, no, my dad and my mom were never, you know, were never pressuring us to be the next, you know, Pete Sampras or, you know. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. Well, the reason I bring this up, kind of like the whole family thing, I mean, I've wanted to talk about it before and stuff, but because mm -hmm. it's interesting, right? The commentators will always say when it's like a family member in their corner. But the reason I wanted to say it is because um, there's a time I remember where I was at the gym and I'm doing my training mm -hmm. with a class. And then uh, uh, next to us, there was a kid's class and it was like a jujitsu class. Mm -hmm. And there's a dad there. And when I was growing up, my dad was really tough on me, man, like really mm -hmm. tough on me. And it was tennis, actually. So mm -hmm. I played competitive tennis my whole life and competitive soccer. And my dad was really tough on me, man, like really tough. And I don't know why, probably because I have psychological damage, but I could see the father and I knew this, this guy is not like, not like your dad, let's say it that mm -hmm. way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've got my eye on this guy and sure enough, something happens with his kid and the kid starts to cry. Um, like it's a little kid, obviously starts to cry and then goes over to the dad or something. And I'm kind of doing my thing, still working out, but I see it in the corner of my eye. And then I see the kid with the dad. I don't know if this is the same kid that was crying. Maybe it was a different kid. I don't know, but the, the kid with the dad and he's like in his face, like I'm talking like, He's like this and he's like, bah, 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 bah. dude, this is like in a martial art gym, mm -hmm. right? And it's a kid and it's not even competition. Like this was just training, you know? And he's like in the face of the kid yelling. And I was like, my blood starting to boil. 
mm-hmm. and like, you know, past traumas are ro- like rising to my brain. Yeah. And then I see the dad as the kids like moving, it's like the dad goes and gra- oh, that was really loud. Yeah. But he gra- like, see, I'm already getting mad. He grabs his lapel of yeah. his gi and like jerks the kid a little bit. Not a lot, but like grab the lapel of the kid. You know what I mean? And I'm like looking at this and I'm fuming, Prince. I'm like freaking so mad. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm going to say something. I'm going to do, right? Like I'm getting really mad. And it just bothered me so much. And I'm like, this is a martial arts gym. It's a place of honor and respect of all, like you should never do that to your kid is essentially mm-hmm. my, my message to all the people. You should never do that. But like to do it in a martial arts gym. And I was like, oh, you freaking, you know, like, like, you know, and I'm like, and then, so I'm just staring this guy down, man. Like, I'm like, you know, and I waited until he made eye contact. So he knows I saw it. Wow. You know, for all, for all the Spotify listeners right now, this is the biggest I've seen Tim on the show. Yeah. He is livid. Like you should have heard like the, the lapel grab. Yeah. You know why? It's because I worked out chest today. So I'm extra puffy. So I didn't. Yeah. But anyways, no, I was mad, Prince. I was mad. And like, I'm, I'm telling you in, I didn't grow up with martial arts, but like doing martial arts as an older person, you realize the amount of respect and stuff like that, that you're supposed to have in a gym. So for this guy to do that to his kid, like I said, do it anywhere. I'll be annoyed with you, but to do it in a martial arts gym was even almost like more disrespectful. And I wish that the coach saw it. Like, I wish mm-hmm. that someone in a, in a position of authority had seen it to be able to maybe say something. But then again, I don't know if you would, um yeah yeah that, that's a yeah that's a tough situation but i mean like even you describing it right now i feel like if 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 the person actually went over the top and did even more things like it, i i think you would have were you doing kettlebell class or i forget but it doesn't matter what i was doing no 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 here's the thing had he done something more yeah i would have definitely gone over and said something because for regardless of what I saw, and I don't, okay, maybe he didn't grab the kid. Sure, maybe he didn't. But I know he was in his face yelling at him, mm-hmm. right? I'm saying maybe he didn't because, like, I'm just saying allegedly, you know? But, like, maybe I didn't see it right or something. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm 99% sure I saw it right. But had he done something more, for sure I would have said something. I was really contemplating saying something at the time, even mm-hmm. still, because mm-hmm. I like I, like I said, I stared him down till till he caught eyes with me. Then I looked at him again another time to make sure that he caught eyes with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I've seen him ever since. But yeah, no man, I was pissed, pissed, pissed because I'm like, look, man, my dad did that to me. Mm-hmm. I know other people whose parents were like that to them, and like, mm-hmm. it's not a good thing, man. Like, if you're that parent, you know, or you're that kind of parent, yeah, I kind of think about like how you're dealing with that, man. Like, mm-hmm. oof. Did you ever know anyone with parents like that were like hard on them? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, what? I've, I've had some friends that were actually, you know, in competitive sports and yeah. you know, they, they said it was tough. They, they wished they were in my shoes where, you know, you need yeah, to yeah. know about those things because you were always cut from the team. Um, but no, I mean, we're both crying for different reasons on this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Right. And my, yeah. I, so my trauma is that whenever we're doing sprints back and forth, I'm constantly in the back of some, someone running and I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope I don't get cut. They're like, Prince, you know, it's not a race. Just get over to the other side. I'm like, everything's a race to me. Everything's a race. Yeah, yeah. But listen, Timmy, I mean, hey, if this guy is listening to this podcast right now, shame on you. That was not yeah. cool. Um, but no, absolutely, Tim. I mean, you know, what you just mentioned over there, that was not, uh, you know what, I, I don't think that should have happened. Um, it was too bad nobody picked up on it. And even then, uh, it would have been nice to have like one of the coaches actually come up and hey, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, right? and I do, yeah, and I do think like I'm saying this to people too, like for the people that are watching, the people that are listening. You know, if you see that happening, don't be afraid to say something or to at least give a look or something. You know what I mean? Like someone said to me after they said like, oh, you know, if you say something, like it might be worse for the kid after at home. In my head, I'm like, it's probably pretty bad for that kid at home anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're going to get in the face of your little kid and yell at him, again, not yelling out loud, but like you could tell, right? And maybe I'm totally wrong, but that's the way I saw it, man. And okay, maybe this isn't even the scenario, but 
I know this happens in the world because it happened to me. Mm-hmm. But if you see something like that, man, it's not a bad idea to look at that that person, the guy or the girl or whatever, look at them and just, you know, give them an eye, like let them know that you're saying something. But yeah, if it got worse, for sure, I would have done something. Timmy, did you, did you wish somebody went up to your dad and said, hey, what are you doing is wrong? And like... Yeah, probably. Again, though, uh, I don't know whether that would have changed things, man. Like, I don't know. Like, it's not like it's not like my dad hit it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, not hit it, hid it, right? Like, it, he wasn't hiding, yelling. I mean, like, he was out, right? But, and here's here's the kicker, is that I was a pretty successful athlete in in tennis and soccer, like, a, you know, competitive and blah, blah, blah. Um, so did it make me who I am? Yeah, I guess. Could it have been a little bit less rough? Yeah, sure, right? So I don't know, man. It's a tough one. Well, know. well, it's Tim. Tough. Yeah, it, it's uh, actually, guys. This is my first time hearing about Tim being a successful tennis player in soccer. I, I didn't, I didn't even know about that. So oh, right man. now, uh, you think I just got this body from nothing? Years, <laughs> years. No, like I don't. Yeah, no, yeah, no. You didn't know? I never told you. Maybe oh, I didn't. No. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's why. And again, this is like too much about us, maybe now. But I think that's why I never really cared to compete in martial arts as I got older. I always loved helping people. By this time, I was like a coach in tennis. I, I coached for like 10 years or something. But like, I think I'd gone beyond the, the point of needing to prove myself in competition. Mm-hmm. I always like coaching people and helping other people achieve like success or goals or whatever. But I was always happy like coaching or helping people train or being part of uh, training camps for people and stuff like that. Like I always liked that. Um, yeah. So. Wow. Well, I mean, Tim, a part of the reason why I wasn't so successful in tennis was because I named my swing. So I had the backhand of death and the forehand of destiny. And I would scream it whenever. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Tim. You didn't just make that up, right? Like, like, that's no, I'm legit. serious. I would legit. Like, I would yeah, be in the right. middle of the match and, then, you know, my dad would be feeding me balls. And then I'd be going, backhand of death, forehand of destiny. Like, oh, my gosh. Please, please take it seriously. But. You know, I watched a lot of anime and, it, you know, and it, it, it's the only way for you to, you know, get that extra ump if, if you called your nice. swing. So that nice, was the, nice. the backhand of death and then my forehand of destiny. You don't want to <laughs> forehand of destiny. It's- this is, whew, that is sweet. Uh, my tennis coach, we would, uh, when we were all coaching, actually, we would play ping pong during our breaks. Yeah. And uh, what, what would he always say? He would always go... This is the, this is a one way ticket. If it ain't coming back, <laughs> like, always smash you. It's a one way ticket. So yeah, uh, Prince, let's get off this uh, depressing topic. Yep. And we will get to. Well, we were just doing family coaches, good or bad. We're gonna get to Lad versus Dumont. And, and even more depressing, bad. even more depressing topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, you want to know, yeah, you want to know how bad this topic is? So I posted this on our Instagram. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this uh, main event, which we're talking is Aspen Lad versus Norma Dumont. Um, and I said, oh, you know, they're just trying to pick a winner to see who Shevchenko gets to murder next. Yep. Right. And I put on our poll, like, you know, do you care about this main event? And it was, I think it was like 80%. No, nobody cares. But what is so funny is that two people messaged me to say, hey, uh, you know, this is a featherweight fight, right? Like it's for Nunes. And I was like, oh, I don't even, <laughs> like I didn't even, I mean, who are these people, Prince? Well, Lod, Lod is uh, replacing Holly Holm, who's, who's, who's coming out of uh, coming out of yes, the yes. Right? So um, honestly, I-, I and, <laughs> and hold on, and, and, and Holly Holm versus Dumont, was already a replacement for the true main event, which was Misha Tate versus someone. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, Misha Tate's a main event. For God's sake, Misha Tate 2.0 comes back, gets a a big win. She's a huge star, a huge uh, presence in in UFC and MMA. So Mm -hmm. she was gonna be the main event of a fight night, which would have been great, Mm -hmm. but uh, she got COVID and so she had to go. So then they changed the main event to the undercard then that fight changes now we're stuck with this the internet is you know it's not just us the internet's pretty ablaze with people thinking this is like they, people were saying they should just cancel the whole card 
If you don't mm-hmm. have a good main event, just cancel the card. They're sticking with it. Prince, do you know anything about these fighters? Do you care to make a pick this, this well, weekend? Um, I, I, you know what? Maybe I'll pick Dumont because it's closest to my last name. So I'll pick Dumont. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. You know what? I will do the same. I will pick Dumont. I believe Dumont is Team Syndicate. Hey, I, okay. So there you go. I Every almost month. I almost want to say that, Prince. For some reason, I believe she is, but maybe she's not. I don't know. And I'm not editing this podcast because it's moving so smooth. So uh, we will never know. But uh, what did I also want to say? The big fight for this weekend is, Prince, what's the bigger fight than the main event that we care about? You tell me, Tim. I'm you don't to... know? Tell Goodness me. Goodness sakes. Sorry, I'm sorry. Just announced, was it yesterday maybe? Oh, yes. Okay. Loopy Godinez, episode 33 guest for us from Canada, representing Mexico and Canada, Loopy Godinez, fought last week prince notice last week she fights gets a first round submission arm bar yep. gets performance of the night fifty thousand dollars she's now turning around in seven days to yep. fight luana carolina a weight class up so this will be at flyweight mm-hmm. seven days she is the first ufc fighter to ever fight seven days apart the next closest was uh kazmat chiamev who fought 14 days apart i uh, sorry 10 days apart but she's going in she makes history by doing this and if she wins oh my goodness and Prince, she, if she wins if she wins and gets performance of the night she'll have made a hundred thousand dollars plus because plus her pay plus her win a hundred thousand dollars in a week that's like bill gates money Listen, and we're going to switch her name up now. It's going to be Loopy S. Hannigan's Loopy Short Notice Godinez. Like, that's what it is. <laughs> no, it's true. Well, look at didn't that. You call, didn't you call someone else that? I think you well, called uh, Motino okay. that, too. Yeah, but look, but this is nuts. This is like yeah. short notice, short notice. And uh, yeah. you know what? Um, Loopy, listen, I hope you take this bad boy one because you're going to make history. And the Mexican Canadian community, we're, you know, and, and everyone here in Toronto is going to be rooting for you. Um, yeah, Tim, I'm excited. I'm really excited because I honestly think Loopy's, she's riding off a, a wave of confidence. Oh, super high confidence, Prince. She was barely touched in that fight. Yep, yep. When we spoke to her, we knew how pumped and excited she was for the fight. She knew she was going to go out there and dominate. She did. And then now she takes this short notice fight. Whew, man. And very smart of her, too. Short notice. Mm-hmm up a weight class yep if she loses eh, yeah not not much penalty if she wins huge positivity because she if she loses eh, you took seven, a, a fight in seven days and it's not even in your weight class right yeah, yeah but you know what knowing loopy that she's not going to make any excuses she's going to no, no 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 yeah. she's going to yeah. win she's going to dominate i'm just saying like it's very high risk low uh sorry low risk high risk. reward Yep. Because the UFC must love her because the UFC will be like, my God, like you're saving our day. You're saving our card. We, we keep a fight. We get you back in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So cool, man. I love that. It's a win-win situation for Loopy. And uh, you know what? She, I'm, she's probably in there. And people are probably going to be excited to watch this fight go down just because, you know what, Loopy, again, she's a scrapper. She's a fighter. She's She does it all, right? And, you know, she shops at Costco, um, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, uh, yeah, everybody watch our podcast with Loopy uh, because it's very relevant to this fight coming up because, I mean, it's essentially the same training camp she was having for this fight. So that's mm-hmm. awesome, man. And um, what else did we have to say? I don't think we had anything else, Prince. Did you, do you have anything else? This is going to be a, a good podcast. We're well-timed today. Definitely. Well, okay, guys, so you know what? Again, just to throw it, the uh, plugins, plugins in there so you, you can follow us and subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Instagram, and you can listen to us on Spotify, Spite Insight Podcast as well. All right? And again, just to throw another plug in as well, Spite Insight 15, 15% on your uh, first order. 
for midday yeah. stories that functional vegan bars amazing and i'm actually tim and also yeah and the t-shirts guys um if you guys are looking into ordering some t-shirts you can dm us and um actually it's actually tim i just want to let you know uh, a bunch of we've done some deliveries we've sent the t-shirts out and everyone loves them this thing yeah. People t-shirt they've worn and they use it every single day they don't ever change hygiene practices they, they should but they said that shirts are so like they, they feel like a hundred percent rat fur yeah i told uh i told queso again our, our one of our guests our podcast guests uh matt queso padilla he we uh he got a shirt from us and uh i did warn him though that they are not queso proof so you know don't spill a bunch of cheese on them so they are you know they're they're Take care of your shirts if you get it. But thank you to all those that have bought a shirt from us. We really appreciate that. It really does help support um, and helps us keep going too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Prince, we've got so we've got the UFC fights this weekend. Which, meh. Aside from Loopy, we're gonna we're gonna choose cheer the hell out of Loopy. But aside mm -hmm. from that, not too many that is too interesting. But uh, now we get to cheer on Jenelyn when she fights in November. It is weird. The one FC cards, they are delay aired. Mm -hmm. So what is going to happen is she's going to end up fighting. She didn't say when she is, because I think they have to keep it secret, but she's going to fight. They're going to tape it. She has to then go about her day for like literally like a month, I think, and not say anything and wait till it airs. Like, holy moly, like that must be tough too. And and for us also trying to figure out if they want or not, it's, 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 it's like you're playing investigator. Like, well, she was, you know, smiling awkwardly here. So she yeah, may have yeah. posted this. And yeah. why would she post this and then comment on that? Maybe yeah, she's yeah. Good, right. So, um, yeah, well, actually, you know what, Tim, since we have some time, I mean, to watch the, uh, the Fury and Wilder fight, that was. Uh, that oh, was yeah. Okay. Can I say something about that? Mm -hmm. This is why MMA is so much safer than boxing. Okay. How much cranial damage did Wilder suffer? Uh, yeah. How much damage did Wilder suffer? He was getting smashed in the noggin, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. badly concussed after mm -hmm. concussed after concussed. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was tough to watch, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm not. I'm not a huge boxing fan, mm -hmm. but it was tough to watch. He was taking a beating. What did you think? You know what? That was by far the most exciting heavyweight. Uh, I've seen mm -hmm. it a very, very yeah. long time because it went back and forth. Oh yeah, and, and but you just saw Fury's like his experience, his boxing experience. You see, he got knocked down. I think it was in the second or third round, uh, mm -hmm. and then he managed to rally back up. He's like, you know what? I got knocked down. That's fine. That's okay. And then continued on. And I feel like he, it, the guy's got stamina for days. He was, you know, going toe to toe. He was on his. He was not. He was flat footed. He was on his feet, and uh, he was throwing his jabs. He was. He was so accurate. Like again, and even at the end, the craziest part at the very end, the man still managed to sing. Yeah. A whole, like yeah. you know, a whole yeah. set. American yeah. party. Like, nuts. At, after the fight, he was so like cognizant, and you know what I mean. Like he was overly attentive. I thought, or like alert. Like it was weird. Like he was almost like a fight never happened yeah so yeah interesting no it was a great fight man great fight again though pretty damaging yeah it's uh well that's that's the sport there plus on, on top of that i mean there are 250 plus pounds of pure power coming at you right and yeah, so you're taking 250 plus pounds into your head constant like oof. Uh, it was tough man it was tough <laughs> all right buddy I think that is it for the podcast for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching again next week. BKFC fighter, Connor Tierney. This guy looks like he is a character. Go check him out on YouTube and uh, prep yourself for who we're going to have. This guy looks like a lot of fun. Uh, beyond that, we are lining up guests. We're going to have a whole bunch of different types of guests. I think Prince, we've got BKFC fighters. We've got uh, MMA fighters. We've got, Oh, someone interesting Prince. Mm -hmm. No, I can't say it yet. I don't uh, want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. But yeah, I, was, I think I, I think I, was some interesting to... people. Yeah, some interesting people. All right, um, guys and girls, interesting guys and girls. Prince, um, that's it, buddy. Have that's it. Day. Yeah. Thank you. Please uh, support the podcast. Tell everyone. Mm -hmm. Tell your friends. Have a good one. There's going to be a bunch of things right around now.
around the 10 second mark and see you later. Peace.